Ethical Perspectives on the News is produced by the Interreligious Council of Lynn County, which is solely responsible for its content. The views and opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of KCRG TV9. Good evening, and welcome to Ethical Perspectives on the News. I'm Heather Hayes, pastor in the Presbyterian Church USA, and I will be your moderator for this morning's show. This past April, Deborah Maynard offered a prayer before the Iowa House, lifting up a need to remain passionate about the work done for about the work being done for the people of Iowa, a hope that thoughtful solutions would be found and the worth of indignity of every person would be seen and that the legislative body would be guided by justice, equity, and compassion in the work that lay before them. However, some legislators chose not to participate in the opening prayer and instead were absent in boycott. Representative Rob Taylor chose to be present during the prayer, but to stand and turn his back in peaceful protest. Others chose to pray their own prayers outside the legislative chamber or from the balcony. What was at issue? Deborah Maynard is a priestess in the Wiccan tradition. She was there at the invitation of Representative Liz Bennett to offer the prayer that traditionally has begun each day of the legislative session. Those prayers are offered by individuals who have been invited to do so by the legislators and last about a minute in length. There has been a lot of conversation in the media about this prayer and these actions. And so we've brought a panel together this morning to explore the issue of prayer in the public arena especially our legislative arena. So to my immediate left is Roxanne Gisler, president of the Humanists of Lynn County. Welcome, Roxanne. Thank you, glad Welcome. to be here. Good. Uh, next to her is Representative Liz Bennett from the Iowa State House of Representatives. Welcome, Liz. Thank you. Welcome. And then also Judd Saul, founder of Cedar Valley Patriots for Christ. Thank so you for having me. You're welcome, you're welcome. Glad you're here this morning. So let's jump right in and set a bit of groundwork for our conversation here this morning. Representative Bennett, uh, would you be willing to share with us some of your thinking as you uh, began um, your, the process of making your invitation to Deborah? Absolutely. So every morning in the State House, we do have a pastor of the day. Uh, this is an opportunity for each representative to invite people from the local community to come to the State House and to um, allow the State House to take a moment to pause, reflect, pray at the beginning of each day. So um, I represent a very, I think you could say diverse district. Um, we have um, Jewish people who live in my community. Um, we have a Baha'i Faith Temple. We have a Zen Buddhist Center as well as a lot of different Christian churches and so I thought it would be really nice to include a variety of different constituents. Um, so we did invite the local rabbi, we invited a Lutheran minister, we did reach out to the Zen Buddhist practitioner in the area and didn't receive um, a response. We also invited another Christian minister and of course we invited Ms. Maynard. Okay. And so um, obviously from your, the variety of your invitations, um, the legislature has opened with uh, prayers from people of different faith traditions as well as a large variety of uh, Christian denominations. Um, do you know in your experience, has there ever been any kind of public protest um, of this nature before? I don't know that there has been a public protest of this type. I did hear after the fact, after we started talking about all of this, that there was some grumbling and that the first time there was any mom in the legislature, that people were unhappy, though they certainly did not act in this manner. Okay, okay. Well, we have a variety, um, a very broad uh, view uh, different religious uh, uh, and different perspectives on faith represented here this morning. And so I would like to just sort of open a question up to all of you. Um, what is your understanding of the role of prayer in the public arena, such as our legislature? What do you believe is the, this, the purpose uh, behind this opening of the legislature with a moment of prayer? Or you might believe that there isn't really a purpose. Um, any of you would like want to jump in first with that? <laughs> with that? Um, I, I'd love to start. Um, the purpose of prayer uh, is a communication between you and God. 
uh, the purpose of prayer uh, in doing it in, in a legislature, especially in America's setting, uh, is to uh, address and seek guidance from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and God our Creator. Um, you know, the, the position of uh, praying to any other uh, false deity other than God uh, of the Bible, um, I think, is destructive and uh, wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I appreciate that particular yeah. perspective. So you are um, of the belief that it's specifically for guidance um, yes. from uh, the particular Christian God. Correct. Okay. Okay. And I think as a humanist, my perspective would be that a prayer before sessions like this isn't necessary at all. Um, I think we would prefer to have our governmental representatives uh, work through reason and critical thought rather than appealing to any deity. Now, that being said, um, if there is going to be you know, a type of prayer or invocation before these types of things, uh, we definitely feel like everyone needs to be included because once you open that door, the door has to be opened for everyone and that includes Wiccans and Satanists and humanists and Dudists and Pastafarians. Uh, it cannot be just Christian prayer. Okay. Um, one of the things that um, maybe sort of sort of a follow up to you, uh, Judd, then would be um, uh, the the mention, and I believe Liz also mentioned of the variety of uh, uh, individuals who are a part of her district. Um, when I, um, I know from your faith perspective, there is a particular um, relational component to that prayer. Uh, how do you imagine others in the room experience prayer when it's not within the context of their own particular faith tradition? Well, the foundations of this nation are based on God, Judeo-Christian values. And, um, you know, there is a uh, freedom of religion, not freedom from religion, but freedom of religion in this nation. Um, I, I think in the public square and uh, the responsibility uh, of this nation is, yes, uh, to allow other faiths to practice their faith, but not in the confines of our capital, okay, where our law, the Ten Commandments, our, our basic law and our structure of our government is based on God. And uh, as far as other people expressing the faith, they have every right to express their faith uh, how they see fit, but not in the confines of our government because this is a Christian nation. Does anyone want to to uh, speak to that as uh, in terms of being a particularly Christian nation? I think it is a Christian majority nation. I don't think that it's fair to say that it is a Christian nation because there is such diversity. I do think our founding fathers uh, were in fact deists and if they did believe in a God they by the time they created the country, they believed that God had, wasn't involved in everyday goings on. Um, I, I don't accept, you know, the fact that Christian religion belongs in our capital. In, in fact, I, I, I think that's detrimental to governing all of the people in the country. Um, do you have any, uh, do you want to weigh in? <laughs> sure, sure, I'll, I'll certainly weigh in. Um, you know, I think that one of the things that our founders were very aware of um, was that government playing favorites or establishing a religion as a favored religion of the state um, can have very detrimental consequences, terrible consequences to a nation. And, um, you know, I, I think that in order to preserve religious liberty for all people, we need to make sure that as a government, we're not setting other religions above others. Uh, we're not saying that some people of some religious faiths are welcome in our state house and other people are not. Um, I think that's that would be something that's very concerning. Um, you know, I think that Iowa is a place where people of many different faiths live um, and I want that to continue. I want people to be able to come and live in Iowa, practice their faith, and 
Um, I think it would be very sad and very wrong for the state house or members of our government to send the message that people of non-Christian faiths are not welcome. Mm -hmm. As part of that political process. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's important to note that our government officials swear an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution, not to uphold and defend the Ten Commandments. And I think that's an important distinction. Now, I do have a specific question for Judd. Uh, many of the protesters might be considered um, and uh, as belonging to more conservative Christian groups um, uh, or denominations and faith communities. Um, and I'm trying to be kind of uh, careful and not, and not do a lot of labeling. Um, but I'm also very aware of uh, to say the word Christian can actually mean a variety of uh, differently held beliefs. Um, uh, so are, are you willing to kind of self-identify if I refer, refer as a more conservative Christian? Go ahead. Okay, perfect. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so then yeah. might you speak some then to the uh, fears or the concerns that uh, more conservative Christians might have concerning having a Wiccan priestess offer the invocation prayer? Well, who you, uh, who you wanting a blessing from, God or Satan? Mm -hmm. who, who, who are you addressing? If, if it's not of God, if it's not of God, the uh, uh, creation of the earth, and rather a Wiccan who celebrates the creation rather than the creator, you're essentially trying to receive a blessing from Satan, uh, is, is how we view it. And um, I think that's just destructive. I really think it's destructive. And those of us who fear God, who worship God, know the consequences of doing such things and allowing that in our public square. Mm -hmm. um, now, do you, do you feel that those same held concerns would be um, held over representatives from other uh, other faiths. I know uh, Representative Bennett mentioned that um, Rabbi Imam, um, that she, she had reached out to the Baha'i uh, temple but had not received. Uh, again, it's a, there's a large variety, or, or is it just particularly this, this one um, faith community, or would those same kind of concerns I, be held? I, I, I say the concerns the are held across the board. Uh -huh. If it's not of the God of the Bible and the creator of our world, it's, it's of Satan. Um, and it, that, is our, that is our belief and that's what we believe in. So the, the question you know, lies is, is, do you want a blessing for God or do you want to reap what you sow by asking a blessing from Satan? Okay. Which, which brings me, I'm just going to ask then a question then from you also just to clarify. What um, are there particular elements then in, that you would you would see as needing to be a part of a prayer that is particularly, from your perspective, appropriate? Uh, please refine the question. Um, are there particular pieces of a prayer that you would say that need to be said or to be a part of a prayer for it to be considered a Christian? Well, it, it's, it, it's, who, it's who that person is praying to. Okay. Who are they acknowledging as God? You know, uh, you know, the Wiccan was praying to nature, mm -hmm. appeasing to nature or some you know false deity spirituality. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's not the Creator and the God of the Bible. I mean, the Bible specifically instructs uh, how to pray. But also, if you're a Christian and you have faith in God, you know who you're praying to. Mm -hmm. And I guess it, it's I don't I'm, I'm trying I'm having trouble understanding the question because okay. as a Christian I know who I'm praying to. And uh, someone who's not a Christian is not praying to God, they're praying to. And so, so yeah. other faiths would be an equally problematic. Correct. Okay. So yes. then I'm, I'm going to continue to push you a little bit more. Go ahead. If that's okay. Go ahead. Um, would you have the, those, would um, you have those same concerns for Christians who uh, hold very different viewpoints than perhaps yourself? Because. De de define holding different viewpoints. Um, well, I know within the breadth of the Christian denomination, um, there are differences and opinions of uh, whether or not, for example, the Bible is uh, um, a literally written um, uh, to be taken literally and uh, upheld as um, an inerrant word of God. And then there are Christians who would say that that is uh, 
the Bible is um, God's uh, spirit breathed into man, but there is uh, there's a human element, and the word of uh, God is seen in the Bible is not inerrant. I mean, that's one among many, many. I would consider them non-Christians, and I would say that uh, um, at the end of the day, people that preach that, uh, I'd say there's going to be a lot of parishioners chasing their pastors around hell with pitchforks mm. for not t teaching them the truth and teaching them the word of God. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing for You're sharing your perspective with us here, Judd. Yeah. Um, so now I'm going to move over to you, Roxanne, mm -hmm. a little bit, and ask as a humanist, which I think might be at the very opposite end of the spectrum from where uh, where, where Judd is, um, what fears and concerns do you have about the practice of prayer in the legislative house? Well, uh, you know, as, as I said, our my main concern is that it it exists at all. Um, I, I think it's very exclusionary um, as the the Pew uh, poll has indicated the rise of the nons in this country is is rising very quickly I mean it's up I believe it was over 20 percent and I think that in our government it, it should it should absolutely be uh, the desirable thing for everyone should be that they govern reasonably and and with critical thinking and and not with appeals to deities um, not with I'm not saying that their religion can't um, influence their their ethical values and their morals it absolutely mm -hmm. can but I think when it comes to government that needs to to remain outside of that outside of that purview. And so that's my concern, is that any kind of prayer before a, a government meeting or, or a session is actually exclusionary. And my preference would be that, that it not take place at all. Now, as a humanist celebrant, uh, I am certified by the American Humanist Association to perform ceremonies. I, I am allowed to do invocations, mm -hmm. and I would absolutely you know, if the policy doesn't change and they still do that, I would absolutely go to the state legislature and offer an invocation as a humanist celebrant because they've opened the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to now ask you sort of the same question that I asked Judd um, in terms of what elements, if you were asked to, to come and, and give a prayer, uh, before the um, legislature or in any other kind of public uh, forum like that, what elements would you consider as important pieces of that, of that prayer to be shared? Actually, you know, listening to what the Weak and Priest has said, I would agree with much of what she said, to govern with justice, with mercy. Um, I would add to that critical thought and reason and equitable treatment of, of everyone. Um, it's, not, it's not a hard thing from a humanist perspective. You know, we, we want to do good to, to everyone, to help everyone, and, and that should be the message, you know, to, to govern for the betterment of all people. Okay, okay. Well, I did a little uh, Google searching um, in preparation for today's program, and I uh, and and thinking about the multi-faith arena that is our world, and um, I found that, uh, for example, in World War II, or World War One, there were two choices offered for the designation of religious preference when you were entering into the service. You were given a choice: you could check Jewish or you could check Christian. Um, today, there are over 100 military codes that uh, are used for people to self-designate their faith. Um, they are faiths that we hear of on the news, um, a variety of the Christian denominations. Um, there is a, a designation for Wiccan, um, as well as some uh, de uh, denominations that I have never heard of in my uh, 20 years of pastoring. Um, there are also designations made available for atheists, agnostic, and unclassified. So in the face of that diversity, um, do you believe that prayer in the public arena should be reflective of that diversity 
or should it be seeking to uphold a particular point of view? And we've we've kind of been dancing about that <laughs> issue a little bit. So if any would like to weigh in on that, because I think that's one of the, the the central questions. We have the diversity in that public arena. Is it is it do we should we reflect that or not reflect that? <clears throat> I'll, I'll go ahead and start. I don't think we should reflect that at all. I think, uh, uh, like I said, I'm a Christian. I believe in the inerrant word of God, uh, his divine word, and praying to anything else is leading someone on the path to hell. So uh, I'm against anybody praying to a false deity. And if, uh, um, you know, in our military setting, what we're seeing now is, a, is an attack against people proclaiming Christ. Chaplains actually praying about Jesus Christ and they're kicking him out of the service. So uh, if there's an open of diversity and, and interface and all these other things, why the clamp down on proclaiming Christ? That's a question I pose. Mm -hmm. Well, that will be uh, perhaps fodder for another uh, whole 30 minute program. <laughs> uh, the place of faith in the military. Um, do either of the two of you would like to weigh in, uh, Representative Bennett? Absolutely. Um, you know, I believe in a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And so what that means to me is that government should represent the people and that my job as a representative is to represent the people who are in my district. So what that means to me is that our House of Rep Representatives is the people's house it belongs to the people and that all of our citizens of Iowa should be welcome there. Um, I think that that is the appropriate order of things rather than from the top down the government um, making rules as to an establishment of religion, um, you know, validating or invalidating people's religious beliefs because that's a very personal thing. So I, I think that instead of going there we should just focus on representing people. Okay. And, and yeah, I would say if the legislature or other bodies want to have such a thing, it definitely should reflect uh, maybe not just diversity, but just the general things that we have in common as human beings and what we strive for as human beings. Mm -hmm. um, that would be the perspective that, that I would mm -hmm. like to see. Because, I mean, I, I, I would say despite the various differences um, mm -hmm. that I've heard across the spectrum here, uh, when we talk about um, holding up as a central value or a part of a prayer, um, values such as justice and mercy and compassion and um, uh, uh, treating other ones with, others with kindness and love in the, in, in, in how we uh, live out whatever particular faith that may be, I think those are some, some places for some shared, shared understanding. But I'm gonna push this just a little bit more and almost loop back now to where we started this whole conversation. Um, I think that um, if, and this is a little bit of a, um, so if we on the one hand believe or think that um, we have a right to play, pray in the public arena and, and that that right should reflect our diversity um, of the faith communities in Iowa. So if that, that should be a, a, an openness to... And non-faith and communities. No, and non-faith communities. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, just, I just kind of... Of all types of religious and non-religious orientations. And then on the other hand, however, um, to maybe nod to your um, uh, interest in non-participation in something that you don't hold or believe in. So if we each have our own right then also to uh, not participate, to uh, to walk out or stand up and turn around or partake in an action of peaceful protest for something that we do not believe in. Um, and I don't think we can, you know, I, don't, I think we can all have sort of a shared understanding that, you know, both of those things are in our, uh, our community would be an important 
important rights that we both have the ability to share a faith or non-faith stance and that we also have the ability to, to not uh, participate in something that we don't want to. Um, uh, does that mean that we necessarily should and um, should protest? And I guess I'm getting here to the point of um, the action piece of the representatives who chose not to participate. Um, and, and I wonder if, um, if this idea of having prayer becomes a moment of divisiveness in, in a political climate that is already divisive, uh, should there be prayer at all? Or is that just feeding, feeding kind of the divisive climate of, of, of our uh, legislative body? <clears throat> and I'll, we have about two minutes here, so. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll say this very succinctly. Um, a government without God, let's go look at the history of the past 100 years. A government without God, um, Soviet Union, Every, pretty much the communist governments that took out God are responsible for 150 million deaths in the past 100 years. You take out God out of the equation, you are on a path to destruction that you couldn't even imagine. And that is where our country is headed by wanting to take out God out of this country, out of schools, out of this nation. And you're seeing what's happened when we've taken God out of schools, taking God out, trying to take God out of government. Our nation has gotten far worse over the past 50 years since we started doing this. And so my warning is, is unless we get on our knees, we repent. We repent to Christ and ask Jesus to forgive us and fear God and put him back to where he needs to be. We're going to continue to suffer as a nation. That's thank, my piece. Thank you for your perspective. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say that makes an excellent point for how divisive God can be. Uh, in our government and in life in general. So I would, I would much prefer to not see any type of prayer uh, before any government meeting or session. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to say in the middle of, of the two, Representative Bennett, or? Well, I, you know, my personal perspective in the House um, has been that, that I think it's nice to start the day um, taking a moment. Um, however, as we have seen, um, there are some people who feel that um, only some people should get to do that. And so that's where this division does come in. And that's when it does become a problem because when you do start making statements about who can come and who can't come, then that's government endorsing um, religion. And, and I think that's unfortunate. Um, you know, I think that there's certainly room uh, let's say if we decided not to do the prayer in the morning, yep. there's certainly room for people to respect their own religion, um, even if we don't do it in the chambers. Okay. Well, thank you for that. So, uh, obviously, we've begun to just scratch, scratch the surface of the debate. It's a complex <laughs> issue um, with lots of different uh, viewpoints on how we uh, walk this line of diversity of expression with uh, the uh, seeking out the good of the larger community. I'd like to thank you all for your time in this discussion and your participation this morning. And in addition to thanking the three of you, I would like to thank you, our audience, here this morning. So on the behalf of the Interreligious Council of Lynn County, this is Pastor Heather Hayes. Tune in next week for more issue-based discussion. Thank you.